Everybody, this is Ryan and Jack from 156 Silence. Welcome to Not Fest Daily. How are things going today? Doing great. All right. Thanks for having us. How are you? I'm doing really well, hyped about this, and it's a great time to have you on because there's a lot to talk about, as in a couple of months' time, you will release your EP, Don't Hold Your Breath. So is the anticipation just driving you mad at this point? It's been driving me mad. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I've been mad for fucking three years. It's <laughs> It would be so painful having to sit on a creation of, of mine for that long. Like I, I couldn't even imagine. We wrote the EP in tandem with our, our next album. And uh, we've been sitting on both of them for, for a minute. So Way too long. We're just ready to start putting, putting it out there. Well, at least you were able to put out the wrong sense as we were just jamming that. Nopfest premiered the new single just yesterday. I know some people get really nervous. Others are related. So kind of run me through the emotions for you guys when dropping a new song. Uh, it's mostly just stress. Just like the day <laughs> just leading up to it is mostly just, I hope people don't say this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, Fair. <laughs> what we love is just like, crushing anxiety and then the day of i'm checking my phone all day yeah i mean tell me about some of the stuff you saw coming through then yesterday just some of the things that stick out to you a little bit um for the most part uh the response has been incredible uh a lot of people we were, we were kind of nervous going into dropping this single because it's a little it's like nothing we've ever really done before it's pretty so, different it's uh, it still has our our style to it, but it's not what we would expect people to expect from us. So I think that uh, it it's different, and it, it, I like it at least. I would I would hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I heard it, uh, of course, lyrically, I really dig it, but it's just such an angry and intense track. So I would love to know at this moment, what's kind of really pissing you off or something that does get under your skin, just things that really make you go off when you're like, yeah, I could actually put this into a song as well. I really hate it when I drop my keys like in between my, my seat and like the center <laughs> console. Okay, valid. And then, <laughs> I feel like everyone everyone has these little quirks or things that drive them crazy. And sometimes people will name them. And I think to myself, yeah, that I don't understand where he's coming from. But on that one, I, I get it. <laughs> I really hate stubbing my toe. Having yeah. To are, are you the type, though, that'll just swear instantly? Or are you the one that holds in all the pain? I hold it in. I'm, I'm really bad at doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the opposite. Complete opposite. You're <laughs> I would literally sound like that would be my version of a metal song for sure. That'd be the closest I've probably come to, to putting one out. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's really interesting because, of course, other than the EP to look forward to, you will be performing your only local show of this year. It's happening on October 30th at the Mr. Roboto Project. It's free. You are headlining. So tell me a little bit about being away for so long and now being back on stage, being able to jam out, play these new tracks and do your thing again. Um. Playing at home is always something that's like really, really special for us because like the whole scene just shows up and, and is just super supportive and we always have a great time. The last show we played before COVID was actually a local show. Uh, we opened for Burials. burials. I am. Uh, uh, I forget. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But it, it was a great show, and uh, we're hoping that uh, our first show back will be, you know, just as memorable, especially because it's a release. Kawanashi, From Joy, Fall 50 Feet, uh, Mental Abuse, Cemented in Fear. Cemented in Fear, yeah. yeah it's all our friends are going to be there. Pretty sad okay. show. It's free. So uh, if you're listening to this and you're in Pittsburgh, just be there early because it's fucking free and it's going to be packed. It's going to be tight. Oh, it's so it's exciting. I can't imagine how, how pumped you must be to be back on stage. And when it does come to touring and being back on the road, you actually recently asked fans who you should tour with in 2022. So to spin that around, who would you want to tour with next year? My my dream bands are uh, Bane, Employed to Serve, and Jesus Peace. I just really want to play with those bands there. 
That's actually amazing. We're about to have employed to serve as our second interview of the day. Oh, that <laughs> that's, that's, that's really dope. Like what a coincidence you mentioned out of all bands that could have been mentioned back to back. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> also, uh, I really like the, the Zayo and Black Sheep Wall albums that dropped this year. So if we could play some shows with either of those bands, that would be yeah. sick. That's awesome. Well, the last thing I wanted to ask you about is you've said before how you all kind of found a home within this scene when you were kids. So what made it feel like home to you? Who were some of those first bands or just some of those kind of earliest memories you have of heavier music or metal? You want me to go or are you going to go? You can go. You're the local. Um, yeah, he's from Hawaii. Um, <laughs> I would say I, I got into uh, lo the local scene probably four years ago. Um, the first local show I went to was actually a one, five, six show on a Halloween show. And I wasn't, I obviously wasn't in the band yet, but, uh, they, uh, were the only band that played on the floor. Everybody else played on the stage and then they played on the floor. And I just thought that was so sick. Like, <laughs> and I, I just started hanging out with them and stuff. And, that's kind of how we built our relationship and everything. But if there was a, we're actually going to code orange tonight. If there was a local band, uh, I would mm -hmm. say that it's the most that we look up to is probably code orange. Definitely. That's yeah. I mean, does it feel kind of full circle for you then, uh, Jack, just simply knowing you're going to be playing a show on October 30th with the band and going back to your origins with them, you played on the third, you know, saw them on the 31st and whatnot. Like that's kind yeah. of a nice little, it is. I didn't, I didn't think about that, but it is. Yeah. Shortly after, awesome. we'll be doing uh, seven dates with the Acacia Strain on their upcoming tour too. So that'll be really, really fun. We're looking forward to that. That's amazing. And then Hawaii was mentioned there. So how did you kind of first get uh, exposed to to the heavier stuff? Oh man, <laughs> I've been listening to heavy music since I was like eleven. Hell Every yeah! Day I heard Randy Rhodes play guitar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've just been been getting progressively heavier in my, my influence as I, I went along and somehow I ended up here in, in this sick ass band and I can't wait to, to rip gigs again. I just want those shows. I just, I just can't wait for October thirtieth. That's what you know. <laughs> Oh, I love hearing bands like talk about everything they have on the horizon because you can just tell uh, just the genuine excitement that you guys happen to have and just kind of like the humble side of it too where you can finally do this again. It's really cool to see. So uh, Ryan, Jack, I want to say thank you so much for coming on here discussing all the exciting things on the horizon and hanging out on Not Fest Daily today. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much.